more. Good food has a way of inviting stories, and stories have a way of inviting new perspectives and empathy. Sometimes there's an unspoken honesty that comes with sharing a meal with family. But what happens when you sit down to eat with your mom or dad, not as your parents, but as people, as friends? Two people from different generations, each with one question for the other. Join us for some good eats and quality time with mom and pop. Hi, my name is Kason. Uh, I'm 16. I live in Huntington Beach, and I'm Korean American as well. And today I'm at Bopo Mofo here to eat with my dad. I chose Bopo Mofo because we don't have this type of Taiwanese American food in our area, and we like coming up here to eat it. I like to order the chicken sandwiches and popcorn chicken, and there's a strawberry drink that's really, really good. I eat with my dad every day, <laughs> never ending. <laughs> We've talked about all, everything under the sun. I tell my dad everything. I feel like this is just gonna be me and him talking together and just, I mean, I we're probably just gonna remember stuff that we already talked about before in the past. I felt nervous because being on camera is always scary, but I felt like this would be a nice opportunity to get to know my dad even more, I guess. I don't know a lot about his history. His history is very, very scattered. So I kind of want to know more about it. It's going to be a nice opportunity to get to know him and his past a little bit more. I'm going to go order now. Hello, Pops. Hey, hey, hey. I have food today. There you go. Nice. I have some chicken. My favorite. Did I get the right food? Oh, we good? Yeah. yeah, you did, but you've forgot the sauce. Extra sauce, man. Extra sauce? You just grabbed one. Yeah, but that's for you. I'm fine. Y you can have the sauce. I don't need the sauce. It's fine. It's fine. Don't be coming over to dip because it's gonna... all mine, dude. Thanks for bringing this amazing food. You know, this is like my favorite chicken, right? Because this reminds me of, remember after church when you guys were younger, we used to go get some of this? Well, you remember. Well, I don't know I remember. It was our church it was next to this tapioca place right by the 405. Me and my friends, like in what, third grade? We went there, got chicken, came back to church, and then went to service. We would bring some for you too, I think. No, and then you wouldn't tell us, and then after on the way home, you'd sneakily say we should go there again, and you'd get more. No, wait, I don't remember this. I don't remember this. I remember or, I remember getting you or some. Or wait, you would say something like, oh, brother didn't get any, let's go get some. You were a master at getting food when you were young. That even, is fair. Even that today fair. you are, but. It's called like, being a master for a reason. No, you, you just knew how to get your food. All right, quick question. Sure. What did you eat when you were like growing up? Because I haven't asked you, like, I, I don't know. Like, what did I eat when I was a kid? What did I eat? When you like, were growing up, like when, I, when you moved, because I know you moved from Korea, Puerto Rico. Right. So what did you no. eat there? Or somewhere there? Really? <laughs> Say with me, <laughs> South America. South America. No, Puerto Rico. <laughs> it's a completely different place. <laughs> so before we immigrated, I don't remember much. Mm -hmm. I remember like, you know, eating Korean food yeah. in Korea. In South America, I do remember eating some like really amazing banana chips, like fried banana. You know how like you glaze banana? Right. And then that was like a pork dish. I still can't remember what it was, but it was really, So really you ate amazing. glazed banana and pork? Yeah. Okay. It was good. I still remember it to this day. It's one of those tastes that just like stay with you. So what them, what'd you eat when you were in America, when you first got here? Oh, when we first got here, first thing I ever ate out of the airport, my aunt, who picked us up, took us to McDonald's. Okay. So that was like the first American food we ate, but most of the time it's just Korean food, right? Like kimchi, rice. I know that you've told me most of the stuff that's happened since you've been in America from, I guess, 18 to 20, 
to you, but you've never really told me below. Like you never really told me your backstory. The only thing I know from when you were younger is that you moved, or no, you were born from in Korea. Mm -hmm. You moved to South America, right. and then you moved to California, the, the United States. But I don't know anything about that journey. I, you know, you know, I was born in Korea, mm -hmm. but when I was about four, my parents, your grandparents, mm -hmm. had a pretty decent business, and some laws changed in Korea, and so they needed to get out of Korea because the laws that changed made their financial situation different in a bad way. So they wanted to get out of Korea and come to the United States, but back then you had to wait for a, long, for a visa, okay. which is someone sponsors you here and then you come, but you have to wait for approval and that takes anywhere from five to 10 years. So a bunch of Koreans got together and said, let's all immigrate to another country. And they picked South America. We went to South America, specifically, I think it was Paraguay. Okay, not Puerto Rico. That's fine, that's fine. We don't, we don't talk about that. Okay, just remember <laughs> that next time you tell this story to anyone. It was South America, Paraguay, and Ecuador. So we went there. My parents started their little business there, and uh, we actually went to school. I went to kindergarten, first, second grade in South America. So imagine being Korean, mm -hmm. you know, kind of speaking Korean a little bit, and then having to learn Spanish. Reference. Native language in Ecuador and Paraguay. And then our visa came up, so we were able to come to the United States. So I got here when I was probably around eight or nine years old. So that was kind of like the journey process up to that point. So you know the stories about the high school. I know high school, I know high school. I know that you would walk to school mm -hmm. by yourself mm -hmm. on a busy street. And like elementary school, you would walk across. You got beat up sometimes. I didn't get beat up. Sometimes. What are you talking about? Sometimes. No, no. We, we did get into a lot of fights back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah, what did you get in fights about? Because I know some sometimes it was uh, was racial. Other times it was just, I don't know, kids being kids. and. Oh, 99% right. of it was racial. Right. 1979, 80 is when we got here. There was a lot happening. Generally, people in America did not like Asian Americans specifically. They would call us all kinds of slurs. So imagine being in like third or fourth grade, right? You mm -hmm. go to school. Every day at school, some kid calls you some derogatory Asian racist name uh -huh. and pick fights with you. So that's, that's what happened. So literally, I couldn't walk to school without someone picking a fight with me because they called me a name. So it was, it was pretty bad. And times now, the way it is, it kind of reminds me of, of those times where I couldn't walk out the door without feeling like something was going to happen. Because something probably would happen. Yeah, right? and something because did. Like yeah, your uncle and I, we got into fights pretty much every day. We got uh, expelled from school because we stood up for ourselves. Okay. And because we were Taekwondo black belts at that young age, we would fight back. Because you would, technically you knew how. Right. right. But this is hilarious because we, we, we wouldn't really actually fight. There was only like maybe about 10 fights, let's say, we got into. Maybe about seven of them we didn't actually even hit anyone because all we would do is just get into our poses and, and scream. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, so you just did the stance. We'd do the stance <laughs> and we'd just scream and we'd just like, bring it on. And they would just, <laughs> the kids would just like freeze and they'd yeah, go away. Yeah, because it's like fourth grade, right? Right, right. All right, now we've gotten into the meal, but are uh, you ready for the questions? I've been ready for the questions. Oh, have you now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm... I thought you were nervous about it. Well, your 16-year-old is yeah, going to ask brain. you questions. I don't know what your 16-year-old <laughs> brain is going to come up with. Hopefully, it's some questions I can actually answer. Yeah, I mean, I'm not nervous about it. About you? Yeah. Are you nervous that I'm going to ask? No, I you. I don't think you will. I tell you everything already, so... Please. <laughs> Hmm. What do you think? Do you want to go first or me? Uh, or you go first. I can go first. Yeah, okay. Go. So mine says, what would you do differently if you could redo the last five years? What do you hope doesn't change in the next five years? Um, I'm 16. I would be 11 then. If I could yeah, change what, anything. What grade is that? Ugh, sixth grade. So I'd be in middle school. Yeah, didn't you have some troublesome moments in your... Oh, don't remind Middle me. Middle school life. Don't remind me. <laughs> I'm not saying that either. So that's, I'm asking um, you, what would you do differently? I made a couple mistakes in middle school that I wish I could redo. Right. And I should have I should have fixed it, but I didn't. Like, is it something you can share? Was it like uh, a mistake that you can share? One mistake. I don't. I don't think I ever told you this either. Hmm. So there is something. 
Well, you just said that there was nothing you, oh, you haven't told oh, me. Oh, God. Okay. So in eighth grade, I was after school because there was an after school club. And I used to hang out after school because I had homework and I wanted to get stuff done and I wanted to do stuff. Yeah, I remember. So when we were playing a game and there was this one, one girl being super mean to me and I let out a very bad word. Oh, okay. Super bad word. Okay. She looks at me. I looked at her. I yelled it. And then she went wide-eyed. Uh-huh. And guess who's behind me? Oh, the teacher. The principal. Oh, no. So the principal takes me around. She takes me around the campus. And I'm, I'm scared. I'm about to relieve myself. <laughs> and I was like, what is Pops going to do to me? What is Mom going to do to me? How am I going to explain this? If middle school has been such a pain. I'm almost done. And then she walks me up. She looks me in the eye. She's like, did you mean that? And did you like really want to say that? Mm -hmm. And I said to her, no, I didn't mean that. I was just very angry. And I was very honest about it. And she left me on the hook. No repercussion. <laughs> it was just a time where I could have, I wish I could have changed what I did. Right. And like what I've done in middle school. I feel bad that I couldn't control myself because right. we made up already. Oh, okay. Mind you, this is only like three, four years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you learned from that. Yeah, it's a lot of change. What's the other part of that question? What do you hope doesn't change in the next five years? So from today, you think I'm about gonna be matter? 21. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I still have the same friends that I have right now, and that our family's still like the same. Yeah. Like, I like change, but if it's not good, then it sh if it's already good, stick with it. I have a really good friend group. It's really up to you guys all working hard to maintain it. It takes a lot of hard work to maintain relationships. So, Kaysen, mm -hmm. you wanted to know, mm -hmm. what do you remember the most when you were my age, which is, you're 16, and uh, <clears throat> second part of that question is, how much of yourself do you see in me now? So how much of myself do I see in you mm -hmm. now? Well, I remember when I was 16 that my parents weren't around very much, um, just like most immigrant parents. Uh, do, you, do you know what the term latchkey kid means? No. You wouldn't because you're the next generation. But when I was growing up, we were latchkey kids, which the term was for people who come home and their parents aren't home. So you kind of, kids that come home and they kind of left to take care of themselves, right? From food to, to cleaning up to whatever needed to be done around the house. So at 16, what do I remember? I remember wanting to have the freedom to go places and do things like you get to do, but not being able to really do it because my parents were busy working, didn't have a lot of money. So I think just like trying to figure out that balance, right? You're in water polo, you're swimming, you're doing a lot of sports. I did some basketball, I did some, played football, and then I surfed a lot. And so that kept me busy. And that's what I wanted to do all the time, but I really couldn't because you needed money and you needed resources to do that kind of stuff. And how much do I see it's phenomenally unique how like God shapes human beings, but I see like 99.9% .9 of me in you when I was your age. And that's what scares me because I see you and I go, man, that's exactly how I was. And I'm like, I know what I was thinking, I know what decision he's gonna try to make. Uh oh. And that's why. That's not worrying at all. Uh, well, it's kind of scary. <laughs> it's scary for you, but it, it is what it is. It's that kind of the DNA and your personality. I can already tell, like, okay, yeah, I, I would say I see a lot of who you are. But you're like version 2.0 of me who gets to do everything that I wanted to do. I mean, that's true. Your age. So I you, am should, very lucky. you should be very lucky and very I'm stoked. Blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Case and I'm living through you, like the things oh, you're God. doing, and I'm like so happy to be there and like, you know, be at the events, whatever it is you're doing. And I, I want to participate. And that's a little, probably a little bit overwhelming at times. It's uh, not, it's more like, hey, I get my dad to appreciate what I'm doing instead of yeah. telling me, hey, it's not good or you can't really do it. Get someone who wants to appreciate me for what I want to do and what I want to succeed in. I think it's just, for me, it's, I want to see you happy. I want to see you be happy at whatever you're doing. If I'm bothering you in that, I feel bad, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like I'm living my life all over again through the things that you get to do. Your mom always makes fun of me because I, I don't feel like I'm 
I'm your dad. I don't feel like I'm like old in that sense, you know? And we'll get to that stage, just like your brother. Sometimes yeah. I feel like we're already We're already there. hanging out. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when you, when you get to that. Well, you still are my dad. We, yeah, when you hit that boundary. <laughs> as long as we respect each other's boundaries, I'm, I'm fine with whatever you say or do, as long as it's with this respect. That is true. Okay, so Kason, we have one final question. Oh yeah? It's the same question, but we, we just have to answer it. Flip on three. One. You gotta count. <laughs> two. All right, one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> that laugh, man. Oh Lord. Come on. Okay, do you want to read it out loud? I will read it then. Okay. What will you miss the most about our relationship as we grow older? I'm gonna miss the fact that I can just go to you, I can tell you everything and I, I can feel okay about it and I can feel secure about it. Cause when I'm an adult and I'm out of the house or when I'm like doing my own thing, I won't have as much time to right. talk to you and, and tell you everything I've done because that would be an overload and you live your own life too. I'm getting close to that time and age where I just want to, I feel as if I want to branch out and move and experience stuff on my own. Yeah. What I'll probably most miss the most is like being around each other all the time, right? But well, we're around each other 24 seven. I know, I know. You know, at least we have like social media. <laughs> that, you know, we that, can catch up on that. Yeah, so even if we're not talking, which is like what a lot of relationships are these days, right? Because we, even though you're not talking to people every day or seeing them, you can at least see their life and see how they're doing. And probably for me, like being your dad, it's like, okay, how's he doing? What's going on? And you know, you're lucky because I like to share. You know, will I miss being able to be like, hey dude, do you want to eat some steak? And then you're like the only guy in the house that wants to eat steak that with me. That is true. <laughs> because because we're, Cameron's vegetarian and mom doesn't want right, to eat. Right, right. <laughs> so that I'll miss, right? Yeah. So when it comes down to food, like, you know, this is kind of apropos to who we are in our relationship around this food, right? Because it's like, we kind of connect on food, but we also connect on a bunch of stuff. So if I'm gonna miss anything, maybe I'll miss the food. Maybe it's that, cause we like, do eat a lot together by ourselves. Yeah, and you're the only one that like doesn't complain, except you bring me only one sauce. Look, that's okay. we've been on the sauce this okay. whole time. I forgive you. I will bring you a tub of sauce next time. But you know, you know what I mean, right? So, I do. So I, do. I think I think we both agree. Like we're not going to really miss a whole lot about our relationship, <laughs> whether it's surfing or food or whatever it is. Hopefully, you you will know that uh, your mom and I are always around, with um, plenty of food and plenty of stuff to support you guys with. I take what I learn from you guys and I try to implement it in uh, the way I interact with others. So it's I'm slowly learning. Yeah. Totally growing, yeah. I guess. Be positive, be a good support, be an addition um, to whatever you do and whoever you're around, and that's, what, what else is there, right? That is the plan. Yeah. 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 I know my limits. I oh. I'll just have one more.